Kevin McCarthy, House Minority Leader, top Republican in the House from the great state of California, is in focus now and on the mezzanine in person with me. Great to see you. Great to be here. It's my first time in person. See? I there like we go. So much more. Yes. Yeah. So let's start with this aggression from China and whether any of this is surprising and the fact that it is so aggressive compared with where we have been with them recently. I think there's a number of reasons for that. First one is Biden administration handled it wrong. They stayed silent. They, they should have had a very strong statement that the Speaker of the House or members of Congress can go any country they want to, and China's not going to dictate to any American where they can travel. So that was an opening that gave China the ability to do it. She has his own issues back home domestically. So what he did, he grabbed an opportunity here. How do you unite your country? Pick a common enemy, right? So about Taiwan and America. So Pelosi's timing was wrong with that. It gave she an opening to build up. But where she really made a mistake, I support her going to Taiwan. I would have gone with her had she asked. She didn't take one Republican. When she went to Ukraine, she didn't take one Republican. So if you really want to make a strong statement that America's making a statement, don't make it partisan. Don't take all Democrats. If you want to have Congress is going to speak with one voice, take people from both sides of the aisle. It didn't have to be me, but just take another Republican. And had she done that, that's a much stronger voice of what she's trying to do. And what you would have done at the very beginning, too, have America speak with one voice. We've got a real weakness in this White House, where the White House wouldn't even back up the speaker for going to Taiwan, backpacking on China. It, sh it gave President Xi of China to think that he had influence over the president because he was weak about it. America should always speak with one voice, especially with the idea that China cannot dictate to Americans where they're going to go. So it's interesting because because when I talk with, with Democrats about this, there's always the question of, well, what would he have said? He didn't want to make it look like this was a big thing. You just gave the words that a president of the United States would say. Our people can go anywhere they want to go. Yeah. No, period. And China would never have said another word. They wouldn't have built something up because they would have realized, no, we can't do that. Because should we start saying now where Chinese should be able to travel, whether they could even come to America? I mean, it just escalated they every part of it. They wouldn't care if we did. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> but, but this is the other point. When you have weakness in the White House, China feels they could empower more. Watch what they have done, how they spoke to us in Alaska when they had that meeting with this administration. They feel emboldened because they're not being pushed back. So they think they can continue so, to go further. Is it too far to reach? Um, because we have talked so much about questions around the president's son, Hunter Biden. Is it too far now to begin to ask the questions? And if you and Republicans win majority in, in November, I know that you'll look into this, investigate. But right now, to be able to ask the question, the press corps, what is your situation, Mr. President, with China? Why the silence now? Well, the I feel like that's in bounds. I think that's in bounds, especially after what has come out from the laptop and now admitting that it is Biden's laptop, Hunter's, now admitting what we're finding in there, who is the big guy. Those are questions that have to be answered. The press corps should be asking that. But what really should be watching is what transpired after Afghanistan. Why does China feel they could be more emboldened? Mm. Based upon the... And then think about, look, we're, it is great that we're able to take out the terrorist. But why is the terrorist Phil that pl helped plan 9-11 sitting in a balcony in the capital of Afghanistan? That's how far that they are now back together again and feel that this whole discussion of what the decisions made by Biden were wrong. Thirteen more Gold Star families. He didn't listen to the military getting out. He's weakened us around the country, and now a weakness of how he's standing up to China is not just there. Remember what he said to Putin. Well, if you take a little bit, of a minor people. incursion, yes. words heard around the world. All right, let's get to this. The fate of Democrats' massive social spending appears to be in the hands of Arizona Senator Kirsten Sinema, co-author of the bill. West Virginia's Senator Joe Manchin, who you know was on the program yesterday, says the two had a, quote, nice talk yesterday, shortly after this program, I might add. Sinema has yet to commit to the bill, though. Her party wants to push it through before the August recess. The legislation is facing some new backlash now. Reporting from the Tax Foundation estimates, estimates rather, the tax hikes would el eliminate 30,000 jobs. 
Critics are also calling out the provision that brings back the tax on imported oil and petroleum products. They point out Americans are already struggling with painful gas and energy prices. Senator Manchin defended the bill to me yesterday. Watch. How in the world can you be raising taxes when all we're saying is the wealthiest co uh, corporations in America, 55 of them pay zero to help this great country of ours, to defend ourselves. Well, how does I'm saying Americans, $400,000 and below now, are going to be taxed. Their That's taxes wrong. are going to go wrong. up. That's a lie. That is a pure, outright lie. So their taxes are not going to go up? Not at all. No. He stopped short of, of saying that it was a lie coming from uh, the Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. He just said McConnell was wrong about that. Uh, and McConnell's not the only one saying it. By the way, again, it's Kirsten Cinema, a Democrat from Arizona, standing in the way of this potentially. But the White House press secretary wants to go after Republicans over the bill. Watch. Where the president and congressional Democrats have a, verifi a verified plan to fight inflation, congressional Republicans, on the other hand, are standing against these investments because they are more about protecting tax welfare for those who gain the system than they do about curbing inflation. It's in the binder, minority leader. It's <laughs> yeah, right it's, there. it's only the words she reads from there. This, this is the problem. We, we show they're going to raise taxes. Look, Democrats control the House, the Senate, and the White House. They're the ones who brought us inflation. Remember that American Rescue Plan? That it wasn't just Republicans warning about it. Steve Ratner said it's the original sin of where inflation started. You had Larry mm. Summers warning him about it. They passed it, now we have inflation like we haven't seen in 40 years. They're the ones that brought gas prices higher. Remember where they said they would end fossil fuel and where they went after stopping the pipeline, ending the leases? Yeah, gas prices went up. They're the ones who created our streets not to be safe by defunding the police, electing these prosecutors who won't uphold the law. This no cash bail that we're finding in New York as well going around. Yeah. So the worst part about this, they created all these problems, they have no plan to fix it, and this bill itself, killing 30,000 jobs, but you know who, who they will hire? 80,000, 87,000 new IRS agents to go after you and audit you. They'll raise inflation higher, they'll spend more money, which brought us into this problem. They have no plan to solve all the problems they created. That's why this November is so important. Well, and, and you know, when I press on what actually is in the bill to address high inflation, the one thing that they point to, including Manchin, is bringing down the deficit. But Penn and Wharton and others have said, models that they've worked have said no. Actually, it will increase inflation for a little bit and then just basically flatline it until 2031. I mean, we're not moving forward. Why could we trust anything they said? Rem remember what Biden told us? But well, we don't have a choice. They're in the White House. Yes, <laughs> but this is why... We only have one president at a time. But this is why we should stand up. Remember, it was Putin's fault. It's the gas station's fault. It's, um, it's inflation is only here temporarily. Now we found everything we told them beforehand they were wrong about, and they want to continue down the same path. Why don't they change course cut spending, stop spending so much money, fund the police, start producing American energy instead of going to Saudi Arabia asking OPEC to produce more. All of that, their policies have been wrong. That's why we need a new direction. We need Republicans to win this next election because what we'll do, we'll make America energy independent, we'll produce more energy. We'll protect our streets and make them safe again, right? And then we're going to preserve our freedoms. So you talk about, and I said you have to trust because they're the only ones in the White House. Well, trust, but verify. And that's what we spend most of our time doing now, verifying. Um, but, but you talked about enough time to turn things around. Only 97 days to the midterm elections. That's the first chance. So why are they rushing it now? Why are they rushing that's it? That's a very that good question. Two people got together and said, I'll agree to this. And what are they doing? They're talking about uh, clean new energy. They're not producing one more barrel of oil. And that clean new energy, that taxpayer billions of dollars, who controls that market? China. China wins again. They'll get 90% of all the solar panels are going to be made over there. Let's talk about the potential for a red wave and what it could really look like. I understand you, just from talking team to team here, are going to be going to in excess of 100 uh, events with candidates, uh, 22 states 
it's it's going to be even? a barnstorm across America. What's the singular message? Why handle it that way? Is the Look, minority leader? This is the take back the house. This isn't about Republicans winning. This is about a new direction for America, right? We're going to lay out our plan to show our commitment to America of what we'll do. We'll, be, we'll bring down the cost of energy. We'll make itself energy independent by creating American jobs and there. We'll fund the police, right? We're going to make our streets safe again. We're going to give a parents a bill of rights, that you have a say in your kids' education. We're going to secure our border, stop fentanyl from coming across there. That is a national security jobs. issue. But it has to be yeah. done. Um, Leader, before I have to let you go, I I'm curious with this new thing that in some Democratic districts they're doing, they're, they're actually paying some of the, <laughs> the conservative candidates, right? Um, not paying them, but, but making donations on their behalf and making it easier technically for them to beat them, they think. They think. They want to pick the most extreme to think they can win. They're spending thousands of work? money. I don't believe so. It, ha it hasn't worked so far. I mean, look, I trust the voters. The Democrats don't. They want to play games with it. I, I don't understand why a Democrat would give to the Democratic Party if they're going to go and fund um, it, the people that they think in the Republican Party. I would think people should join us. You know, if you're really serious about sending a new direction for a moment, go to takethehouse.com. You can join with us. You can find, like, Juan Siscomani just won last night in Arizona. Juan Siscomani and his father and mother immigrated to America when, when he was 10 years old. His father still drives the public school bus in Tucson, Arizona. He's an economic advisor. He's married, six kids. This is a new direction. You got, you got Myra, Myra Flores, born yes, in Mexico. On the program. A seat that Biden won by 13, that Obama won by 22, that's 84% Hispanic. This is what we're talking about, reaching out to every single American that you have a say to take your country back, to put a new direction for America. And we have a plan to do it while the Democrats have the same old plan with nothing to change the course of what they've done in the past. Well, you're asking why they are pushing this big spending bill through now. We're going to know potentially by the weekend what's going to happen with that. And so your visit was right on time. Appreciate you coming in. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Bless you. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.